what's going on everybody so as you can see the leaves have changed we're in november winter's coming got to get the jet ski stored away for the winter so we're going to winterize it so first things first uh we already cleaned out the cooling system but we're going to go ahead and show you how to do all this so we're going to do everything from start to finish we're going to start with the cooling system and then we'll move into some other other pieces there that we got to do before we put it away in the garage or for winter for storage for next amount of time okay let's get into this we're going to get into flushing out the cooling system and the supercharger and getting that prepped we got our key and our lanyard out for a kill switch anyways i got one of these things for a quick connect garden hose you don't necessarily need it but it works better i find it simpler to use it so what i'll do is down here so here we have our engine flushing port and our supercharger flushing port. I'm gonna take this and we're gonna start off with our engine flushing port. I'm gonna go ahead and get this screwed in. Now, I also have, uh, I'm gonna take this drain plug and put that back in so water doesn't splash out from around and go back in the hull. Don't think it will, but we'll put it in just in case. So, in order to flush out your cooling system, you're going to want to get, have your garden hose ready. I already have mine turned on. I have a quick connect. If you don't have a quick connect, make sure your garden hose is off. Screw your garden hose in to that port. Then you're going to come up. We're going to start our engine. So we'll let that load. I'll just click OK. So we're going to go ahead and fire this up. You don't want to let it run too long without no water. So have things pre-prepared with the garden hose. So we're going to start it up. We're going to go ahead and put this on. We're going to flush out the system. Now, you can do it, but you also want to make sure that you got to have water coming out your spout up there. And then we're going to have some water down here coming out. And it'll start coming out of the tailpipe. Make sure there's no kinks in the hose. water coming out so after about two or three minutes you're going to want to let it disconnect your garden or shut your garden hose off or disconnect it then we're going to come around here we're going to give her a couple shots of fuel and just blow out the excess water <laughs> We'll go ahead and we'll shut it off we'll go ahead and shut it off also another thing that i like to do that would just be like a regular thing you would do any other day it would be advised to get some salt away or salt off and i'll show you what that is there so here we have salt off applicator so we have the applicator and then we have the actual salt away uh salt away remove salt non-hazardous non-toxic biodegradable green product so sea water and sea air application road salt removal application safe to apply to any surface water based so this is environmental friendly as far as i know anyways i'll show you what we do with this salt uh salt away stuff set this up here so this vial allows us to take some of this solution and run it through the system. So 
I run in salt water. So normally every time I come back and it's parked for a week, I'll take a little bit of this stuff and I'll uh, flush it through the system. So right there, probably don't need that much this time around. Have about one ounce. We probably only need about a half an ounce really, to be honest with you. In my scenario, uh, I ran, I was just flushing with water most of the summer. So a couple times I used one ounce. So anyways, we will go and get this plugged into there. Once that's plugged in, we can go back, start our engine back up. Nope. We're gonna start our engine up. Get our hose hooked up. See down in here, it's filling it up. It's mixing all together and it's gonna send it through the system. Then it'll come out all soapy looking and it's gonna flush our system out. As you can see, coming out the exhaust. We're gonna let this flow through. Once that pile's done and it goes back clear, we'll disconnect it, give it a We'll hook the garden hose back to it, flush some of the salt, off, salt away or salt off out of the system. And then after that's done, we'll disconnect everything, put the garden, uh, give it a couple shots of gas, pull out the extra stuff, and then shut her down. Okay, so now that uh, pretty much everything went through the system, we're gonna disconnect that. We're gonna disconnect this. We're gonna send some regular fluid through through the system to flush it out some. Get some of that salt away out of there, salt off. You always want to make sure that it's coming out the side here some too. Out of your weeper. Okay, we're gonna disconnect this. Give her a few shots of fuel. Go ahead and shut her down. Now, you see in there, there's still quite a bit of soap suds and whatnot. We'll come back and rinse that out thereafter. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna switch this here from our engine flushing port to our supercharger flushing port. That screwed in, nice and snug. Now we're gonna go, probably put, and empty this out. We're gonna probably put about half an ounce in here of the salt off and we'll attach it to there. Now for flushing out your supercharger, you don't need the engine on, it's not necessary. All right, so we got about a half an ounce. Put our vial back on our contraption here. Plug that in. And then we don't have to start the engine on this one. We can plug the hose in. But make sure you're just you're on your uh, supercharger flushing port. We'll flush that out some. We're gonna have some more foam and stuff coming out of here. It's gonna come down up through there. So if she's all coming foamy down through here. We're gonna rinse a lot of this out there after. There, now that we uh, flush some salt off, salt away through there, we're gonna disconnect our garden hose, and disconnect our applicator. I'm gonna take my garden hose, I'm gonna hook her back up. Just flush out some of that salt off, salt away. Salt off, salt away, whatever that's in the system. 
to make sure everything's nice and uh, flushed. Woo! Disconnect your garden hose, but make sure you stand clear. Otherwise, you're gonna get soaked, like I just did. We're gonna take this back off. Set that off the side. What I'm gonna do is we're gonna go start the engine just to kind of circulate and see if there, like, if there's any uh, stagnant areas in there, it's gonna actually come out. So we'll start the engine. We're just gonna, not for very long, 30 seconds or so, give her a shot or two of fuel, get the thing spinning, and blow out the rest. majority of it all out of the system in there take our garden hose we're just gonna rinse the rest of it off give that a spray in there we get this all rinsed out perfect so now that we uh, flushed out the cooling system let's move on to the next step so we got here we went through our preparation for storage we started with our cooling system, now we're going to move into our bilge system. So we're going to remove the engine cover, remove the rear air duct clamp, and rear air duct. And we'll get down to showing you how to flush out your bilge system. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and disconnect, or uh, flush out our bilge system. So we're going to have to remove the seat, so let's go ahead and do that. A tool that you're going to need is a 10 mil for sure. So, back here on the back of the seat. There's two handles, one on either side. Slide that back and up and off. There's your two handles, one on either side. <clears throat> We're gonna have to go and spray a little bit of uh, lubricant down on these pieces here, because they look like they're starting to rust. So we'll get some lubricant put on that, probably wash, try and wash them down a little bit with some water, and then We'll spray them down so they don't rust any further. So we'll go set this off to the side. Take our other seat off, part of our seat. Look at these, the fittings on the back of our seat here. This one here could, it's not as bad, but we'll probably lubricate those as well. Just so we don't have any rust starting from the salt water driving that we were in. Okay, so our 10 mil. Loosen up all these here. Should be six in total, six washers, six nuts. Take them off. Try not, don't, don't lose them. And you don't wanna drop them down in anywhere. So make sure they're all in a secure spot. I'm gonna put those in my pocket. Make sure your pockets don't have any holes where you're gonna lose the nuts or the washers. There, so we got our six nuts off and our six washers. So all you gotta do is lift up, jiggle around a little bit and this engine cover is gonna come off. Slide it back and up and out. We'll go set it over in a safe location. Seems that we're getting a little bit of rust here. Nothing too crazy. Set that off to the side. All right, Let's see what we need down below here. Okay, so our bilge line is just in behind here. Ooh, she's a little warm in here. So, so if you guys haven't already seen inside, this is what the inside looks like of the Kawasaki Ultra 310 LX supercharged jet ski. So, we're going to take this one off here to gain access in behind to that line. So, what we got there, we could either use a flathead or it looks like an 8 millimeter wrench or socket. Let's go get some tools. All right, so this is probably gonna be a little hard to see up in there. I'm gonna use this flathead screwdriver down in here 
and be careful because if your engine's hot you might burn yourself the engine's warm take this clamp off take your thumb kind of put it in on that clamp to hold it in place so you can spin it using a socket would probably be easier it's just what was easier for me was grabbing a screwdriver wiggle this down remove that just kind of slide this down and out of our way a little bit well we should probably take our clamp off first and we'll set that up here so we don't lose it slide this down now down in here looks like there is an 8 or a 10 mil bolt all right so we're gonna see i think it's a 10 could be a 3 8 see if we can't oh we can't get in on it like that okay so we'll move that pipe down and out of the way and see what we got here for a size Ten mil it is. Now that we have it loose, move our ratchet out of the way. I'm gonna do it by hand. Okay, try not to lose that little bolt. I'm gonna set that in the in the foot well here. Okay. Now this is your bilge bilge line so that one hose would probably go down towards the back and then out or out through the exhaust or something so we got to take off one of these hoses here I believe that hose goes down to where one of the exit ports and the other one goes to the hull so it says disconnect your bilge line and then run the garden hose through this line then disconnect this line and run the garden thro hose through this line also there is a breather right here I don't know if you guys can see that right there so this breather right here if that's clogged it could fill the engine compartment it says make sure the small breather hole and the fitting is clear if the hole is clogged the engine compartment will fill with water when the engine stops or idles it may be necessary to remove the fitting so this is the fitting we're gonna blow we're gonna flush this piece out we're gonna flush those two hoses out now it says the one that goes to the hull this one here I believe goes to the hull and we're gonna go and take out our drain plugs in the back so we're gonna go and take there's one take out two because once we start flushing that tube out ugh. once we start flushing this that tube out the hull is gonna fill with water so we're not gonna want to keep the garden hose on there for too too long it says here in the book about a minute connect the bilge fitting filter hose which comes from the hull bottom to the garden hose turn the water on and flush it out for about a minute during this procedure water will flow into the engine compartment do not allow a large amount of water to accumulate in the engine compartment remove the drain screws in the stern that's the back to drain the engine compartment so we're gonna start flushing that out and then it says reconnect the other hose or connect the other hose to the garden hose turn the water on and flush it out for several minutes before reconnecting the hoses to each plastic breather fitting make sure the small breather hole in the fitting is clear so we got to make sure this is clear if the hole is clogged the engine compartment will fill with water when the engine stops or idles it may be necessary to remove the fitting 
So I switched out my tips. I'm gonna go to Jet. Well, uh, what's full? Yeah, we could probably go on that one. <coughs> so, I'm gonna try and be careful of not scratching the side of the jet ski with the hose. Get off some of the dirt. And go here and try and get this in here. Take this hose. We're gonna spray that down through. It was coming up the bottom there. There's one. Let's do the other. Get this down in here. Say that's okay there. Set that off to the side. So that one that was on the right looks to be the one that was filled the hull with water. And the other one right here was the one that goes down by your jet pump and would drain out. We're gonna take this here, gonna rinse this out. Looks pretty clean nonetheless. Oh yeah, drop it down in the dirt. There. <coughs> so, it came out like that. They say blow through it. Where's our little weeper hole? Air goes through that, perfect. So, now, I'm gonna hook this back up. Hook this one back up. It's gonna go back up into there. We're gonna put our bolt in. So try not to drop that. Should probably be a little hard to get back out. So what I'm gonna do is put this through here first. I'm gonna hold it with one finger, try and line it up with the hole. Once I get it there, slowly move my hand around to get the thread started. There. Now I have the thread started. Take our socket, hand tighten it. Try not to drop your socket. Got it hand tight. Feels like it's in the right spot. And take our ratchet. We're just gonna snug it up. It's only plastic, so we don't have to go too, too tight. Just enough to say it's snug. I say that's okay. Just to hold a couple hoses on in place. We're going to take our tube that we disconnected earlier. Pull that back up into place. There. Now, take our fitting. Put this back on. Slide this up, up into place. Make sure it goes all the way up and on. And that it's not flipped down on one edge or anything like that. You can feel around with your hand there. I'm going to snug this piece up. Grab our screwdriver. So you only got to go snug. You don't want to go too crazy. They're only pieces of plastic. They're not very big. There. A couple of dugas. All right. So the bilge is now flushed out. Let's move on to our next step, putting this away for storage. As you can see down in there, 
we got some water. So, next step, fuel system and engine. Wash the engine compartment with fresh water and remove the drain screws in the stern to drain the water. Wipe up any water left in the compartment. Or park on a hill so it dry, runs out the back. Okay, we'll rinse the motor down a little bit. I'm gonna turn it on mist. It's some of the, we already did all, I did the engine washing on my last trip. So we're just gonna give it another little rinse here. We're gonna wanna soak up this water on top. We are gonna get some WD-40 and we're gonna miss WD-40 all over this because it's water displacement 40. So watch this. As you can see up here, how there's a bunch of water droplets. When we go and we miss this over top, see all the water droplets running away? So that there is gonna help all the water run down to the bottom and the WD-40 will coat the metals and different connectors and stuff like that. So we'll give everything here a spray. Should try not to spray down directly on the supercharger pulleys or belts. If you can help it, try not to. Give things a little coating. It's gonna help things from rusting. Normally, uh, the jet ski is not tipped forward, it's usually tipped the other way, so this water normally runs off the back. But as of right now, we're gonna have to soak it up with a rag because we're going to pull the plugs out of it okay so we got that we'll give a little light coating right there set that down off to the side go and wipe some of that off of there we'll set this off to the side too all right we're back in the garage was running out of daylight. Supercharger 165. They don't have things in order here. Spray some fogging oil down in that supercharger because it doesn't tell me here. It should have been in the book to do so. We probably should have did all that before we sealed up the engine. Supercharger lubrication. Remove the front seat. We already have all that off. Remove the filler cap. Filler opening cap, which is that little black cap right here. Start the engine and run at idle. Idle speed. Apply commercially available fogging oil to the supercharger for the filler opening for 10 seconds. Stop the engine. Okay. We're supposed to start it. Let it run. For 10 seconds while we fog that supercharger in reality we should have before we pulled the plugs we should have fogged the supercharger for the 10 seconds then pulled the plugs fog the cylinders put the plugs back in and then rehook everything back up wasn't in that procedure wasn't in the storage uh, maintenance procedure so let's see if this is going to start with that fogging oil in it without smoking me out of here that back down in place <laughs> So we 
fog the supercharger for 10 seconds as you can see the fluid that was uh, the oil that was in the cylinders got burnt off and sent out what I'm gonna do is uh, fog this for another three or four seconds then I'm gonna pull the plugs back out fog the cylinders again so it's nice and uh, lubricated in there plugs out of it all right I got a pair of pliers here I normally have ones that are co coated in ro rubber that doesn't uh, damage anything but this will allow me to down underneath and then wiggle that and pull up so there's one try not to mix these up also, if you look here, we got one, two, three, four. So this is plug one, plug two, three, four. Now, we are gonna disconnect the main coil wire. So that, I said it was here. So right here, we're gonna go to the back side of the coil reach down in with her hand we feel where it plugs on the coil come down and there's the connector we're going to take that connector off so when we whirl the engine over with fogging oil the spark the ignition coil is not going to trigger and send a spark out the boot so we don't need to get shocked or anything like that while the plugs are out this side here there we go you know, disconnected from that side so there's two two locking tabs this side here would clip on to a piece to like a bracket to hold it in place this one the other side here is where you would disconnect the two connectors okay now that we have that apart let's pull out our spark plugs all right we got some spark plug sockets we have a magnet or we'll also little grabber tool so if your spark plug socket doesn't have the rubber boot in it good to have a little magnet to be able to pull your spark plugs up and out of the way so let's find out what spark plug socket it is right there so that is a 5 8 or 16 millimeter socket to be able to take out spark plugs. Take a ratchet. And break these all free. There's one. You want to try and keep these boots semi-clean. So if your tools are a little dirty, I advise to uh, stay away from the fittings and stuff or clean the tools off before you get into removing anything. You also want to look down into your spark plug holes to make sure there's no water that's all sitting down in there because we don't want to put water down into our cylinders. So our spark plug holes look pretty clean. They look pretty dry. Everything looks accordingly. Okay. Now we'll go and we'll spin these out. And it's even marked here. One, two, three, four. For which cylinders what? There's spark plug number four. We're gonna set these down here where it's fairly clean so we don't mix them up. We'll put them all in a row. There's number two or three. <coughs> Number two. There's number one.
<coughs> so on, ooh, on to checking our uh, spark plugs here before we reinsert them. So the plug gap is supposed to be 0.024 or 0.028 of an inch or 0.6 to 0.7 of a millimeter. So we're going to go and check this here. They say do not, um, do not adjust the gap. So right there we're at like 0.28. So we're on the high side of uh, it being a little bit wide of a gap. Now I had one of these spark plug gap tools or whatever. Uh, didn't seem quite as accurate last time I was using it. So this one here says we're at 0 0.023024. And then the other one is at 0 0.028. So, we're going to deem this spark plug as good because I don't know which one is actually the accurate one. So anyways, long story short, we're going to put the, this plug back in. Probably all of them. We're still going to check them. They say we should add a little fogging oil on uh, the spark plug. But first, we added some uh, fogging oil in each cylinder. We disconnected our coil. What we're going to do is we're gonna whirl this over a little bit. Now, I'm gonna go around to the other side, just in case anything. You don't have to uh, do too, too much there. Just whirl it over a couple times. It's saying that the battery is, uh, there's a battery issue or a short somewhere. We're going to grab a little bit more fogging oil. Do this a couple more times. One, two, three, four. Let that drip down in. <coughs> So let's check our second one, see what's going on here. So that's a uh, point, same thing as what the other one was. Okay, so we're gonna say these spark plugs are within spec. They say add some fogging oil on the spark plugs. Probably so they don't rust. So we're putting the jet ski away and we're gonna go and Probably start getting the snow blower and the snowmobiles up and ready. <clears throat> we were trying to get that one there running there last year and she was uh, causing us some issues. So I think we got to go and get into some carb stuff there with that this year. So we can get that on the snow. Hopefully uh, I'll be able to get my daughter on that one. Look, teach her to ride uh, to drive a snowmobile. Okay, so we got them spark plugs dropped down into the hole. Clean some of this oil off the trailer there and get it on our clothes. Gonna get these spark plugs snugged up by hand. Now, before I came back in, my street's on a little bit of a hill, so the water that's down below there, you can see moving around. I went and parked it on the hill. So a good majority of the water was able to run out the back. There's still some water down in the bottom. Uh, I'm going to throw some rags down in there and try and soak some of that up because I can't really access it from the back side. So that looks to be the only spot where I can reach down and get the water from out of the hull. Repeat this step one through four. Spin them in by hand till they snug up. I think I'm gonna go and order one of them swoosh kits. What I mean by that is uh, the supercharger here has a blow off valve. So you can get a little trumpet piece that hooks up into here. You take this and take it off your air box down there and you put a, a cap on the air box. And you run it out here so when the blow off valve goes off, you'll hear it out underneath your seat. You go, Ksh! might get some heads turning. They'd be like, what you got going on there? And I'd be like, oh, can't tell you. Now, 
spark plug torque, tightening torque, 13 Newton meters or 115 inch pounds. You follow the torque spec, I'm just going to snug them in where I feel. Where I feel it's comfortable. You don't got to go too crazy on this. So, 115. So, 115 inch pounds is 9.6 foot pounds. So, not very, very tight. Just snugged up in a little. Choke up on your ratchet. If you're doing it like me. Choke. So this is what I mean. Choke up on your ratchet. Move up near the head where you don't have as much leverage. The less leverage you have, the less pressure you're going to put. So I, I got up here and can kind of guesstimate 10 foot pounds just because I've been... I've torqued quite a bit over time, so I got a good guesstimation of what uh, 10 foot pounds is. Well, 9.5, 9.6. Okay, so let's put our plug wires back in, but first, let's get some dielectric grease to go on them. All right, this is the stuff we're going to use because that's what we have. It's called Ultra Seal. It's corrosion preventative sealant. Uh, they recommend like a better uh, marine um, marine electrical dielectric grease, which would be a little bit thicker and a little bit more tacky. The stuff that's actually on here is a little bit more tacky. It's almost like grease. But anyways, we're going to take a little bit of this. We're going to add this here on the actual piece on the bottom. Go around the bottom just a little bit. Then we're going to go up here where it seals in place. So we don't, hopefully don't get too much uh, seepage coming by. So that's number two. Push that down into place. Get that down all over the each one. Now you want to make sure these boots are uh, clean and don't have any uh, metal deposits on them before you put them back in. So there, we finished the fogging of the engine. Now what we have left is the supercharger. <clears throat> but what I found weird is that we fogged the engine before the supercharger and we're going to have to whirl that over. Now that uh, we did everything, we got to hook our coil back up, I believe. So we'll come around here, take our electrical connector, and we're going to plug it back together. Perfect. Now, is there a spot for that? No, just kind of tucked in behind. Make sure you hit that like button. Hit subscribe for more jet ski content, more Kawasaki content, and other videos. Also, check out my second channel, Lucam Adventure. If you go on the regular Lucam Tire page, you're going to see the Lucam Adventure one. Go subscribe to that. That's going to show a lot of our jet ski adventures up different rivers, fishing trips, snowmobiling, off-roading, and whatever else we can do as an adventure. Okay, all right, so don't, don't forget before we want to get out that water down there. So what we're going to do here, we're going to lower the front of the jet ski down so hopefully the water runs towards the front. There, let's try that. Hopefully it didn't run too much. OK, 
Okay, so I can't really reach it from this side. We'll go around the other side. We're going to wipe some of this off here. That was from the overspray when I whirled the engine over. Anyways, let's get down in there. Roll my sleeve up so I don't get hooked up on anything. Take this towel, put it down in the bottom. See if we can't soak up some of that water. If you got a shop vac, you could stick a, the hose of the shop back down in there and uh, suck out the water. My shop vac is at the shop. So this is what we're gonna be doing to get that water out. So we got some, still got some more. We also gotta go and disconnect the battery. Should probably take that into the house, put it on a shelf where it's uh, not on the floor. You don't wanna leave them on concrete. Concrete will drain the battery out on you. Best place would be putting the battery on a shelf with the battery tender. <clears throat> I might put it up on the bench over there. How much more water we got down in there. Not too bad. Getting pretty dry. We'll raise her up a little. See if some of that water is going to come back. Let's see what's happening here. Put that towel down in there so it doesn't sneak by. Seems like there's some up in the bow. A few little drops, nothing too crazy. Also, we're going to do a complete trailer maintenance before winter for storage. So if you guys are interested in that, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can see how uh, the maintenance of the trailer is done. I got a couple cool things there I did to this trailer that doesn't come factory. A couple little modifications that really, really would help this trailer out from factory. So make sure you stay tuned for that video coming out and I'll show you what I did. It all looks stock. I didn't do anything like ab crazy excessive, but wait for that video, you'll see what I did. Definitely helps out the longevity and the life of the trailer. So you don't have to buy multiple ones over years all right you get all that out you can't see anything in the back there's a little bit of white residue here that i'm not a fan of i'm just gonna wipe that off because i don't like the look of it on that little piece of plastic so down in there is where your supercharger belt is we should uh go and take that off one of these days have a gander at it, have a look, a little look-see. And also there's a bearing on that pulley that doesn't come really pre-greased. So we should take that apart too and uh, grease that up. All right, let's get this battery out. So the battery will be down in there. So we're gonna lower this back down. There. Now, is a little bit lowered at our working height. Okay, <laughs> got a little toolbox slash anchor box here. So I got my anchor and uh, I believe there's a rope in there. Yeah, I got a rope, mirror, flashlight kit and stuff's up in there fire extinguisher sits there little tool kit down there that's another thing your ropes that you use all year take these spray them down with the garden hose spray them down with the garden hose get the salt water and the, the crud off of them 
I got a rope in my garage that I hang up and I just hang my rope on top of that. Just flop it over top, let it dry out. Then I can put it back in the machine and the machine doesn't have a bunch of uh, humidity inside of it. <clears throat> okay, so let's take this off. We got our key out. Keys there. We'll put that there for now. Up here in the back, see how that is. That'll lift up. We're going to try and get in behind there. The fingers, and then lift. And then all your tabs are going to pop up and out. Now that it lifts like that. Suck it. Yeah. You got your hands all greasy. Yeah. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Just leave that there, buddy. Okay. Night night. Oh, gotta clean the floors. See you soon. Okay, so there's the battery. So you see how I did that? I reach, I tuck my fingers in behind this. Got a little tight, but I was able to get my knuckles down in behind then lift up so then we got two four six so we got two four six plugs that we got there we'll get this up and out of our way set this here on the side of the trailer hopefully that stays now these are held down by rubber clamps but what we're going to do first is we're going to take off the negative and we'll take off the positive Phillips screwdriver. Hopefully everybody can see what I'm doing down here. I'll get this uh, fire extinguisher out of our way. Okay. Now, I'm a pretty skinny guy or narrow. And if you were a heavier set dude or person, best to take these off and then this hood will open up a little bit more. Now, this little bolt, we're gonna wanna leave with the battery. So we're gonna take that, put it down in there. We're gonna, cause there's a little square nut inside there. We're going to be able to lock that into place, move this one back some. Eesh. Battery terminal there doesn't look that healthy. Looks like it arced or something like that. We will see once we get it out. wonder what's over there in that side compartment. Maybe it's the flat, the spare tire. Ha, ha, ha. There. That's out of the way. We could leave the battery right in there. Put a, ba a tender on it. But I don't like doing that in a sealed area. So with these here to get this battery undone, how to remove your battery. It just, the strap is like a hook like this. So you grab it and you push down and it unhooks itself. So it just slides down and under this and it locks into a little tab. See right here, it just comes undone. Push down again. It's just stretch fit fold downs. Then we can take that, take the battery right out, and, geez, we might be able to take that, put that right in the snowmobile, because that battery's dead. We'll go and we'll set this there for now. We're going to take that, put that on the shelf, put that on a battery tender, or it might go into that snowmobile. I'm going to check the the number on the battery, see if they're same size, they look similar size. 
that might go into the snowmobile because that battery I forgot to unhook it I didn't do my due diligence of prepping that for summer for the summer months when I parked it I left the battery hooked up when I should have uh, unhooked it anyways <clears throat> all right so down back down in here these wires cables here we'll put that back into place they keep their form put this one back up this goes down down and underneath down and underneath there now I don't think we nearly need to spray anything on those. They look pretty clean. <clears throat> Grab a rag, we'll wipe that stuff off. Some of that sand and stuff that off the towels and life jackets and stuff that I put in there. Make sure you hit that like button, hit subscribe, put this back down inside. I'll just set that there, take our screwdrivers out, rag's already out, put our fire extinguisher back. caught fire I'd never get to that fire extinguisher in time I'd probably fall off and be in the water all right so let's get our engine cover back on all right so we got our engine cover back on and take our uh, six washers and six nuts we're gonna put those back on there Perfect. Now, let's put our seat on. I like having it in the second position for the adjustability. Oh, before we go and we throw this seat back on, let's give this a little squirt. Hmm, what do I want to use? bit of green rush check maybe being in the second position that's in place a little bit of rust on that too so Try 
Beautiful. There. Now, all that's really left is we're gonna take a little bit of brush check here. Now, in there, still damp. So instead of deposits, we we'll take some WD-40. We're gonna spray it in here today. Where'd the WD-40 go? So that's gonna get rid of the... some of the water and the crud in there. I'm just gonna coat everything. Also, I'm gonna spray down this stuff. Spray down this. Don't need her swim step. As you can see, it's already starting to rust. I asked Cowie about that. They said, well, if it's used in salt water, they're not gonna cover it. I would think they would have aluminum versus a steel swim step. That might be aluminum, I don't know. But it's rusting. So they got paint that rusts. Or something along them lines. Okay, so. This is going to stay inside for the most part. I'll go ahead and spray down the bottom here, as you can see. Want to keep that lubricated. Spray from that side and a little spray from this side. Give this a wipe because there's a little bit of water there, and then I'm going to respray it. Oh, what's this? Piece of grass. Something stuck in there. There. Get a little spray again. Hopefully that'll coat that down some. We'll get it off the paint. Just leave it on the aluminum. Should be good. 
now make sure you hit that like button hit subscribe we'll see you guys in the next one oh